Hey folks, it's Abby from Abby of Pelinor, and this is my attempt at the reading vlog for the Immune Relong. I say attempt because, ironically, I was unwell when I was reading this. I had pretty bad flu, I ended up taking a little bit of time off work as well, so I didn't do that great with the vlogging, but I still did want to tell you guys about the book and include the few clips that I do have, which are not great. But yes, this is a fantastic, fantastic book. Book. I'm so excited to speak about it with all you guys. Everyone that was in the read-along will be linked down below so please do go check them out and for full transparency Tandem Collective and Hodder sent me this book for free in return for my honest review. Now first up, the first thing I did for this, when I was still half dead, uh, was the little quiz that is an option. So you can do a quiz to see which immune cell you are. Now I will put it up here if I can get that footage, which fingers crossed I can. I screen recorded my phone while I did it, uh, but I didn't record myself doing it because I was in bed. <laughs> Very unwell. <laughs> but, so, I did that. And, as it's going through, you can kind of see the questions and uh, you can see the, the quiz, it's linked down below in the description. And my reaction, I got a T-cell. So I have always got my eye on the big picture, just like the T-cells, who can adapt to be whatever is most needed, from battlefield commander to caterer. You've developed skills in multiple areas, and whichever one you decide to focus on, you'll ace it. Be it goals or the people in your life, you're constantly searching for ways to bolster and support, and consistently checking in and using your breadth of knowledge to assist. I think I answered the questions with what I want to be, not with what I am. Because I'd, I'd love that to be me. I'd love that to be me. <laughs> oh, I'd, mm, please. Please? Maybe one day? Maybe one day. But that was a lot of fun. The quiz is linked below. It tells you a little bit as well about the cells that you're getting, the different aspects of the immune system that you're getting, so it will give you a little bit of an explanation. Or, you know, you can just buy this book from the link in the description. And then you can read about it. Okay, so let's pass you over to some footage from Not Quite So Dead Abby, looking at the response to the quiz that was done when I was completely deceased Abby. It's been a time, honestly. My life is a mess right now. <laughs> I am filming this on the third day of the read-along because, ironically, for reading something about the immune system, I'm not well. So I need a tissues and Vaseline. So thank you very much for sending these along, Tandem. Um, if you want to see my little kind of announcement video, then you can see that up. Yeah, that's probably the wrong side, but there you go. We're on day three, we're a little bit of the way into it now, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I haven't read today's because it is 12 noon and I am on my lunch break, um, but I have read all of the sections up till this point and I'm really enjoying it. It has got the standard Kuzkazak style. If you've watched their YouTube videos, then you will know that. It's written like that, which is fantastic. It very much breaks it down for the individual to a lot more basic level. And he's also told us that he's self-aware that he's doing this, but Philip is personifying the cells and their actions, which is making me feel very bad for like every little injury I've ever sustained. Because uh, I'm like, oh no, my poor little cells, they're working so hard. <laughs> but yes, so very much enjoying the book so far. I am... Um, I wasn't enjoying the cell section as much. I won't lie, I won't lie. There was one section that kind of gave you the basics about cells and there was nothing wrong with it. It was done very well. I just did not have a good time with A-level biology uh, and did not need to be reminded of that time of my life. <laughs> so that was a me issue. Everyone else should be fine with it. I am apparently a T-cell. I hope my T-cells are working hard right now. Uh, but yes, apparently I'm a T-cell. How much I believe this? I don't know. I think I'm going to use it as inspiration. An aspiration to be like a T-cell. I don't think this is me. I think this is the idealised version of me, which maybe says something about how I answered the questions, but hey. So I'm going to go finish out my lunch break. I think I'm going to have one of the teas that they gave us. Uh, lemon, ginger, manuka, honey sounds good with the bad throat. I've got nighttime is not the best idea right now. Fennel and cardamom and aniseed for feel new could be interesting. And then elderberry and echinacea. Echinacea is supposed to be really helpful for colds. So me and my partner have actually uh, finished our packet of elderberry and echinacea. So this is a handy one. I might save this for him because he does quite like that. And so I think I'm going to go have the lemon, ginger and manuka honey tea on the rest of my lunch break before I get back to work. And then tonight I'll be reading today's chapters. Tonight's chapters. Look man, I'm not well. <laughs> Another challenge that Tandem Collective set us was to give us three dinner party facts 
that we've learnt from Immune. Stuff that would be interesting little snippets to tell. So, oh darling, did you know your immune system has an internal complement system? So, stop being so harsh on yourself. Our bodies work in tandem with good bacteria, not only inside of our bodies and in our guts, but also on our skin. In advance, Celine, I'm sorry, I'm doing accents and I have a limited repertoire. <laughs> Did you know that the prevalence of allergies common right now, which is a lot more common than in the example of the 1800s, comes from the fact that our immune system is underused. It used to be used to fight off parasitic worms that were much more prevalent in our guts and in our systems because of the unclean water that we have been drinking for hundreds and thousands of years. But instead, now that we have a lot of clean water that we are drinking, they don't have anything else to do. So they react very strongly to things that previously would not have been considered an issue. Again, I'm really sorry for that accent. So it is Thursday now, I am a hundred pages into Immune. I wasn't able to read all of the pages last night. Still unwell, still not great. May or may not have fallen asleep with this open on the bed. <laughs> Which I didn't realise until my partner came upstairs and woke me up. But I am really enjoying it so far. I will say that there are so many ridiculous quotes in here. Uh, a thousand toothpaste tubes being squeezed all over your body independently is something that I don't think I will ever forget for the rest of my life. See, this is the thing, I'm always in this room, or in the living room, where my partner is. He doesn't want to be filmed, which is fair. So, um, yeah, vlogs aren't the most interesting for me. Because I have no life. <laughs> Another one of the challenges that Tandem set us was to watch and react to a video from the Kutzkazag channel. And I, that's why I have the glasses on, and I have chosen to react to one of their volcano based videos. They've got one or two and that is my area of study. I think this will be really good for me to be able to determine, at least in my bracket of science, if they do actually simplify things well or if they're doing things badly. So, let, let's dive in. Currents of rock spanning thousands of kilometers carry this energy to the surface. Earth's crust is the only thing in their way. It feels solid to us, but it's only a fragile barrier an apple skin around a flaming behemoth. 22 Honga Tonga Honga Hapai eruption around the globe many times and created ocean-wide tsunamis. In 1883, the Indonesian island volcano Krakatoa erupted nearly continuously over the course of five months. One of those eruptions blew it apart, producing the loudest sound recorded in history. 10 trillion times louder than a rocket taking off, heard halfway around the world. Okay, so this is a 12 minute long video and we are five minutes in and we've now had a base overview of volcanology. So you've been told the very basics, but also with accurate scientific detail of how volcanoes form, why they form, and the level of impact and damage that they can all have. They've even went through the VEI, which I like the fact that they've kind of demonstrated how that grows logarithmically, because always oh, they get big, uh, similar to the Richter scale in how they grow. Uh, so I think now, now that he's established a base, which is similar to what he did in Immune, we're now going to go into the actual question of the video, which is what happens if a super volcano blows up. So I'm curious to see how that handles this. Okay. But what's a supervolcano? The term supervolcano is a media invention and not a scientific term. Okay, good. I'm so glad that they've stated that we don't need to be scared of super supervolcanoes. They state as well it's a media term, it's something that the media pick up and run with because it makes a good story that America has got a supervolcano. That's a fantastic story. Um, but we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Everyone is monitoring all of their volcanoes. If a volcano is in a country's boundary, it is being monitored by that country. You think that America isn't monitoring Yellowstone carefully? It's fine. Yellowstone is absolutely fine. I'm pretty sure the magma reserves are actually decreasing rather than increasing. So another fantastic point. It wouldn't come as a surprise. It's monitored. It's monitored so, so intensively. I've never seen the monitoring for Yellowstone, but I have seen the monitoring for two well-known volcanoes. One is Vesuvius and the other one is 
Etna. And Etna is constantly erupting on Sicily, like all the time, um, so that is monitored always to make sure that the lava flows that come from that volcano don't impact the citizens and that people aren't in danger. And Vesuvius is monitored all the time because it is a well-known volcano, and that is the one that caused Pompeii to be covered, and there is a large population in the area, around the area, that would be impacted if that erupted again. It is a risk, it's always a risk, but you can tell that pressure is building, you can monitor the gases that are being released from the volcano, there's lots of different things that scientists are constantly doing and monitoring and comparing against both that volcano's history and also every other volcano of a similar and or different type around the globe to confirm just exactly what is going on with that volcano. There's you don't need to be worried. Who knows, maybe we'll even be able to turn this force of destruction into an agent for good by exploiting the geothermal energy held in their giant magma reservoirs. I don't know how well we will be able to exploit the geothermal energy in volcanoes. Um, a lot of the areas are incredibly built up already because they have fertile land around volcanoes um, from the eruptions, so you would need to remove a lot of the populace that is already living there and then also the danger factor and the fact that you couldn't really experiment with it without it being very dangerous. I'd love to see it though. Okay, that was a lot of fun. I have seen that video before. I have been following Kurzgesagt for years now, that's why I was so interested in Immune, but I hadn't seen that video in a while. It was a lot of fun to see everything that they do in Immune and kind of be more aware of the system that they have. So they very much introduce you to things on a base level, give you a very basic base understanding of what's going on. They use a lot of similes, metaphors, analogies for what is occurring so that you can relate it to something that you are more familiar with in your everyday life. And then they start to build upon that basic knowledge that they've just given you to then start delving a little bit more into the deeper questions and the deeper topics that they are looking at. So for example, the risk of super volcanoes. I enjoy it that they don't risk monger. They didn't do that in Immune either. <laughs> Super volcanoes are such a, a thing in popular media. Um, and I've noticed as well in Immune that they are very factual about the risk of what will happen if it occurs. If it occurs, big risk, big damage. But the likelihood of it occurring and the actual risk factor of the instance is not that high. And I did see that reflected in both the video and the book. So. I, I enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. I need to watch some more Kurtz Kazakh videos. I've been making my part watch them. <laughs> so yes, I highly recommend them. They actually have a lot of videos also on the immune system and on the human body and on biology. So if you are specifically wanting to delve more into the knowledge that Detmer has built up through interactions with scientists uh, and through his own research, then I, I recommend watching the videos because mm. very good, very good. And the graphics are gorgeous. They always include silly little jokes. Um, so for example, in this video there was the clip of Gollum falling into the volcano with the one ring. So there's always funny silly little jokes that keep you entertained and keep you engaged in the content. It's great for ADHD minds. <laughs> and then we have a challenge that I am not entirely sure how I'm going to do, which is... Thank you, train. I live next to the railway. But yes, so we have a challenge from Tandem that I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do, which is to create my own immune system analogy and draw it out for you guys. I cannot draw, and I'm also not great at thinking of analogies on the spot for stuff that I'm not deeply knowledgeable about. So, um, this should be fun. Let's get you flipped around on looking at a notebook. Okay, so, complement proteins. These bad boys. You can see that there are a lot of them. So, let's use an analogy that they are like drones. Yes, I cannot draw. No, I will not be accepting insults nor compliments for my awful drone. It's awful, okay? So they are floating around doing little drone-like things. They're just chilling. They are in your system all the time, but they're just, you know, like, floating around, just moving, just chilling. It's fine. Can you see this with this pencil? No. No, you cannot. What else can I use? We're going in with the Sharpie lads, so let me go over my awful drones. Now you can see them in clear detail. I mean, they do look kind of, you know, it's buggy, so I guess it fits with the immune system. <laughs> but there you go, the little drones are, are flying about, they're doing the thing, they're just existing inside of you, always moving about. And then, a little activator comes along. And this activator tootles its way up, and connects itself. 
to one of the little sections on the drone. And the drone goes, ah, oh my god, it's this square thing. I need to activate. So, it activates and it changes shape. It no longer looks like the cute little drone. Instead, it is an evil killer machine. How the hell do I draw this? Uh, you know what? That'll do. So the evil killing machine... <laughs> The evil killing machine actually ends up sending off certain parts of itself, so now it's just gonna look like this. And this part has floated off because it's went to go and grab other complement cells to change them into these. So this bit that's left, this angry little complement cell, I made it look sad. There we go, angry. Uh, <laughs> is then covering over our bacteria. Let's see if I make a nice big And so our angry little guys are perfectly attuned to fit over the end here. and they amass, and they build up their numbers, and they cover over our bacteria. <laughs> oh my god. With these all covering the bacteria, it massively slows it down. So instead of moving this far, in a second it can only get this far. Which is helpful for us because it means it cannot spread as fast, so it can't reproduce as fast, meaning there's less of them. This is why I'm not a science teacher. Now, our little bacteria that is covered in our complement cells, which are basically super glued on there, it makes it, that's meant to be the eyebrows, not a sad face, it makes it easy prey for soldier immune cells. How the hell am I drawing soldier immune cells? Um, can I draw a beret? No. Can I draw a gun? No. I'm gonna draw a boot. <laughs> a very bad boot. With a smiley face. And so, <laughs> they see this, they clock our bacterium covered in their complement cells, and they're like, oh my god, this is gonna be so tasty and so easy to kill. And so they they come along, and that's the mouth, and they're like, Hum. and they eat the bacteria. And this is a very simplified version of what goes on in the complement system. <laughs> so they eat these bacteria and then they can't spread as much, which then saves you from the bacterial infection. Is this the most simplified version of anything I've ever seen in my life? Yes. Will it do? Also yes. Dear God. <laughs> and after all of this, what do I actually think of Immune? What do I think of the book? First of all, I think it is completely accessible. So there is obviously the worry with the fact that this is about the immune system, that it's going to go really in-depth and be a little too complex for some people. And it does definitely tell you all of the information. It doesn't dumb it down completely. You don't feel talked down to. You don't feel like you're being patronised. However, it is simplified. <laughs> so it is a very simplified version and still retains the core essence of what's going on in the immune system, as far as I know. I, I don't have any qualifications in biology. My science was rocks. It's something that I do feel that most people could still read. It's not like it's going to be locked off to anyone specifically in the sciences, but just do be aware you will have to activate your brain cells <laughs> to actually read this and to get the most out of it. It's similar in that way to the Kurzgesagt Kurt videos. So they are simplified, they are made easy to digest, but you have to actually work to digest them. It won't happen automatically. I will say as well that I adore the drawings in here. They are absolutely beautiful. I was always looking forward to when we were going to get the drawings. They are in the same style because they're done by the same person um, who does the Kurzgesagt drawings for the animations and they really do help to visualise what is going on in your immune system, in your body. Again, these are simplified versions of what is inside you but they're also not inaccurate 
they are like correct and so it's really interesting to be able to see them and to use that to visualize what's actually going on inside of you so i very much appreciated all those drawings in here and then for the content itself this book is amusing and engaging. I was laughing out loud at certain bits and reading bits out to my partner which is always a good sign and I was really interested in kind of learning where the story that Detmer wrote of like the immune system and how it progresses and how it fights off an illness and where that was going and what was going to be the next steps. He manages to make an actual tale out of it which is always a good sign and something that he does in his videos as well. There are some bits that I did have to kind of sit with for a little longer, some bits that I did find a little more difficult to consume and to comprehend, so it's not the easiest of reads, you're not going to blast through this without having to think and then come out the other side with this knowledge. You are going to have to actually kind of digest what's going on, and there were some bits that I had to reread one or two times just to fully understand what was happening, but despite that it is still a massive simplification from the actual full science, so I still think that he should be commended for how much he managed to kind of bring this down to a common denominator level. He's done fantastically with that. Overall, I'm so so grateful that Tandem gave me this opportunity to join in and join with this read-along. It's ironic that I was ill during it, <laughs> sod's law, um, but I was really really grateful that I got to join in with this and it was kind of interesting being ill while reading this and having some of the reactions that he's mentioning and understanding a little bit more why and exactly what was going on to cause these reactions. I, I kind of vibed with it, it just didn't make the read-along part <laughs> as good. Reading went ill, yes, reading with other people went ill. I just felt bad that I wasn't commenting more <laughs> and joining in more. But yes, so it was very very interesting to read when unwell. So if you are mildly unwell and you want something to read, recommend. <laughs> so who would I recommend this to be a good gift for? Well anyone, <laughs> anyone at all who is interested in reading non-fiction, interested in scientific literature, and anyone who's enjoyed the Kurzgesagt videos. So if you've subscribed to Kurzgesagt, you will enjoy this book. Uh, the writing style is very much the same. I could imagine it being read out in the narrator's voice as I was reading this. That was my mental voice reading it. So it is very much the same style as the Kurzgesagt videos, and it is fascinating absolutely fascinating. The analogies are so much fun and they really do break it down and make it very human. He does personify all of the cells and all of the little internal mechanisms, but he does tell you and he's aware he's personifying it, so he does kind of backtrack on that personification at some points to make sure that you understand that this is not a conscious decision that these like cells are deciding to do, but that personification does really assist in comprehension and making sure that you actually understand what's going on because it's easier to think about something else thinking to do something than it happening without them thinking. Like, we think to breathe, even though we don't think to breathe, but like, you, you, you get me? You get me? Maybe. <laughs> so yes, anyone who watches the Kurzgesagt videos, anyone who's interested in science, anyone who's interested in the immune system, and also I think this would actually be an okay book for, for kids. It is complex, don't get me wrong, uh, but one of the girls that we were buddy reading this with is a teacher and one of her students, who's about 9 or 10, said that his favourite book at the moment was Immune by Philip Detner. So it's definitely accessible to a large age range and I really just... If you're watching this video, and you're not one of my close friends because you will watch my videos regardless of what I put out and thank you, I love you, uh, but all the rest of you, if you're watching this, I recommend picking it up. If you're interested, you'll enjoy it. And that is this video. Thank you so much again to Tandem and to Hona for sending me this book for free in order to do this read-along and the review. It was a lot of fun and I will definitely be keeping an eye out for any more possible books from Philip Detmer in the future. I would love to see him do like a full breakdown of the human body. Like, I need him to do this for like the menstrual cycle, for the brain, for the circulatory system, everything. Uh, so, uh, uh, if you're listening, Philip, please. <laughs> if you did get this far into the video, thank you so much for watching, folks. The links will be down below if you want to go and purchase this book, as well as to all of the wonderful human beings that we did the read-along with. They are fantastic, and you should absolutely go and subscribe to all of them, because if you enjoy this video, you will enjoy their content. Thank you for watching, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye, folks!